he was a stockbroker and he called me uh we talked yesterday he's like dude i don't know what's going on with you guys he's like but uh 10 people called me to join exp and he's like uh i tell every one of them that my buddy joe is my guy let me just wrap my head around this thing and he was like uh yeah he was like that stock is uh it shouldn't be doing that it doesn't really make much sense but uh it is what it is it's been crazy you know i'm curious I, I, and we all know it's probably just in anticipation of the run-up you know for the split that's going to happen on the 16th and uh but it's going to be interesting to see to watch what it is i mean it doesn't either way i don't have any intention uh, of selling, you know, something unless I have to sell something. I don't just do it unless it's going to go to another investment or something, but it's been fun at least to watch. It's exciting. hundred percent. Well, I, I just agree with you. Sam Marks and I, we are going to film a rap video with all of our money that we have earned from our stock. Um, yes. You know, we're going to rent the helicopters and the cars and the houses and stuff, but like, hopefully there'll be some There's fire in it. Well, I mean, and it is fun. It, what, what's fun, to, and I know you know this, Joe, and a lot of folks on the call here, it's really great because there's so many things, like as a team leader, that you get to experience, but to see your agents logging on and seeing money that they had even forgotten they had, mm -hmm. because that's the whole point. You know, I just tell people, it's $50 out of every $1,000 of commission. If, right. you're, if you can promise me that you're going to take that $50 and invest it in something else, but you're not, you're going to put it off on something, on and you're not going to know where it went anyway. So just do it, forget it. Even if I was always like, even if it stays exactly even, we get a 10% discount. So you made 10% if it stayed exactly the same, right? And everyone that's done it has been really glad. I was like, I, if I believed you were doing something else with that money, it'd be one thing, but you're just like me. Some shiny object's going to come along. We're going to spend the money on it. <laughs> it's true. It, yeah, sushi. I call it sushi and sunglasses. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's, where my, that's where the money goes, right? If, if you're not smart about it, right? That's uh, what... Not with this girl, because I'm the least picky person ever. One thing I don't eat is sushi. So. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Pop-tarts, mac and cheese, all kinds of junk food. I don't do sushi, but my husband loves it. So <laughs> no, if I'm on a desert island and I'm hungry, I'll eat anything, but I would, I prefer not to. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, let me do this. Let me, uh, let me intro you here. We've got a good amount of people here. So uh, I'm Joe. Uh, I run a, I have a real estate team called the Joe Oz group. We, uh, what we realized a long time ago is we don't like to do this alone. We don't think anyone succeeds alone. We like to share ideas. Uh, and yeah, doing this thing by yourself kind of sucks. I realized that when I was a single agent and, uh, and it's more fun to do it together. Right. And so, um, yeah, we, um, we do this every Thursday at 12 Eastern Standard Time, 9 Pacific Standard Time. We're here on Zoom, same link, and uh, it's open to anyone. So as I'm, I'm looking at everyone here, we've got our real estate team. We have new agents getting their licenses. I see we've got Christy in Texas. We've got people in California, New Jersey. I'm really excited. Um, let me uh, let me quick intro uh, Tammy. So Tammy is, um, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have gotten into business with Tammy. Tammy is one of my mentors. Uh, she's one of the people that uh, invited uh, DeVoe and Sakura and myself over to the company and um, we had gotten we said yes because I thought it would be like <laughs> a really bad idea to say no after I met her and Dan and Kyle and Jay and all these people and you know the truth truth be told man that the culture of sharing is here Tammy was a stranger to me when I met her and she's taking my phone she takes my phone call texts me um, she's normally someone in real estate I'd be really scared of because she sells like three four times the amount of real estate that I sell and uh it's she uh she's someone that like i said mentors me and i look up to and she um she does i'm gonna quote are you what was your volume last year our and team volume this past year was a hundred just over a hundred million okay about 103 million and we were the only one in our um mls to, to break 100 number two was number two team was 87 million and they've got i think twice the number of agents we do so we were, we we're pretty proud of that that's awesome congratulations and i know there's a bunch of stuff that i mean I mean, I Googled you and I was like, you're like a Tom Ferry. I saw you with like the, like the Janet Jackson rhythm tour microphone, like on stage, like in front of like right. thousands of people. I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. So you were a coach, right? As well. Like, but a big time coach at Tom Ferry. Is that correct? I have never been a coach. And that's one thing I love about EXP is I don't oh. want to be a coach. Cause if you're, I have a coach at Tom Ferry. And oh. matter of fact, my call in an hour is with my coach and I love him. I've never coached because some people have a real heart for coaching. I am just, to ADD for that. I can't, I don't want to do anything that's got me where I've got to always be here. It's almost like getting a job again. I much prefer personally, the EXP model is when Joe Oz needs me, Joe Oz calls me, right? And goes, hey, I need you to jump into something. And that I'm really good at versus that grind of all day, every day, taking people's calls. So for me, no, I did speak at Tom Ferry. So a lot of people think, does that got mean it. you're a coach, right? Got and it. I was really fortunate to do that because there that was in 2017. Um, 
and we had just started in real estate at the end of 2015. So that was pretty nuts, actually. <laughs> wow. That's wild. And then I know you do, I'm going to let you take it from there. Is that cool? Like, uh, it's, yeah. yeah. Up too. I know, like, if you just give your own little bio, like, I know the Airbnb, all that stuff, I'd, I want to hear about all of it if that's cool. You bet, of course. Um, so 2015, started in real estate. I had my license since 2009, but I had a lot of other businesses going anyway. So I'll start with the reason I got into real estate as a business, other than just having my own license, was because I married Wes uh, and he was living 100 miles away in Georgetown and he had a really great job. So I'm like, I don't want to leave Fredericksburg, Texas, because it's the best place on earth. I love it here. My kids are still here. I've got businesses here. But what am I going to do to help him find something in this town of 10,000 people that he's going to do to replace what he's doing, you know, in Georgetown, which is part of Austin. So I said, the business I've been turning away for years is real estate. So let's go into real estate. So the basic gist there is 2015, we made that we got married and made that decision. We had our first closing in November of 2018. 2015. It was still just me and Wes. So at our, so had three closings the whole first year of 2015, just started at the end of the year. By 20, then we started building a team and adding a few folks. By 2018, so under three years, we were really fortunate to be the number one in our MLS, according to volume, which is the only way our MLS uh, uh, ranks you. 2019, the following year, we were number one in transactions and volume. Um, so we've had a, a really fast rise, but it's because we threw everything into it. You know, uh, we're like, we're, we're no spring chickens. We were getting married at the time at 48 and 51. And we're like, you know, we want to be number one tomorrow because real estate, we looked at it and said, you know, it's a very cyclical thing, right? So everybody going into real estate knows there's good times and there's bad times. And I said, you know, but thinking about it, Wes, I don't think the number one, two and three guys are ever going hungry. But I'm, I'd be a little worried of sound our size to be number 17 when the bad times hit, right? So we got to get up there and get known so that whenever the market slows, as it inevitably does in a cycle, eventually, uh, we got to be up there. So we started throwing everything into that, growing our team and building. Now, what, what as far as ba uh, bio, let's go back a little further. Uh, I was born in Marshall in East Texas, went to college at Abilene Christian University, got a degree in government. I don't know why. First person, I, and I'm the most non-political person you'll ever meet. Maybe that ruined me for it. I was like, uh, I'm out of this, you know. So I was always kind of a nerdy, uh, get ahead kind of person. I finished high school a year early, and then I finished college a year early. So I decided to go ahead and go to law school because I said, well, it's three years, but I'm already two years ahead. So it's really going to cost me one year is kind of how I looked at it. Plus, my mom said uh, at 20, which I finished college when I just turned 20. And she goes, you look too young anyway. Nobody's going to hire you. You need to get some more schooling. So I said, okay, I'll go get some more schooling. That's when I decided to go to law school. I did. I looked like a little kid. Um, so I went to UT Law School, which was, a, you know, I'm on, I, I had no burning desire to go to law school, but I knew it'd be a great education. I had some time on my hands, really. Um, and so I was really fortunate because one out of seven applicants got into UT Law School. So I was at the right place at the right time for everything to come together to be able to get in and do that. So when I just turned 23, I finished law school. I practiced trial law for five years, four years in Amarillo, one year in Dallas, decided to go into retail, uh, which is crazy because, you know, everybody's like, you have a law degree, which hangs on my wall. And I still have a law degree. I said, any test that you have to take a three day test, you never let that go. <laughs> not going back to a three day test. Right? right. So I keep that active and it's the best education on the planet. But same as a lot of you guys are in real estate because I wanted flexibility and freedom, right? I, I just didn't want to feel owned by someone. So at that time, real estate wasn't yet on my mind. But my mom had a little shop on the side of the road. Uh, after I went to college, my brother's like, oh, this is going to kill her because we were so close and now her baby's gone. So my brother, who's 19 years older, went and bought out a garage sale and said, start in this building and uh, start doing like a little swap shop on the side of the road to keep you busy, keep your mind off the fact that Tammy's gone. So she started growing that into a little business. And within a few years, I would go home from law school. And I've still got this notepad. Actually, I use it every single day. This pink binder, y'all will laugh, is what she used. And she, she would pull this out. With, and she had all of her, her daily sales of her swap shop were on here. And she pulled it out and she goes, you're a lawyer and I make more money than you do. <laughs> and I said, that is not right. That is not right. So we started talking and she had gotten into selling quilts in addition to the swap shop stuff imported quilts. She had learned how to do that. Um, so she goes, you know, you could make good money and do that. So at that time I was married to who became the father, Barry, who became the father of my kids. And I was like, we got to do this. I've done law for five years. I'm not going to 
I'm not going to do this. I'm not, I look at the people, I'm a hard worker, but I looked at the people ahead of me and they were working longer and harder than me. I was like, it doesn't even get better. I mean, where's the, where's the freedom? So at first, my husband at that time was like, oh, well, we're professionals. I mean, back and he told my mom that and she was having none of it. She goes, you're back in school. What kind of professional are you? What, what kind of money are you making? <laughs> Let me show you my, I'll show you my, pro-. we went to a banker one time and he said, well, of course we'll need to see the profit and loss. And my mom was a great country sage. And she goes, oh, it's all profit. Ain't no loss. <laughs> yeah. I said, I love your definition, mom. So anyway, we do, we go into retail and we end up in Fredericksburg because the family cousins had started going into it and not really any help. We were just all looking at what each other was doing. And a tourist model is what they were going. It's like Branson, Missouri, Eureka Springs, places like that. And it was working. So we said, well, in Texas, the tourist town is Fredericksburg, Texas. So we came down there, checked it out, opened up a shop and found out that I could make by selling a couple, two, three imported quilts a day, more than I was making as an attorney. And the thing was, I, I loved it because it was business, right? It was entrepreneurial and I was working more than ever. I'd worked more hours, but it was for me. It was for my business, right? Kind of like in real estate. I think that's the same way we, we feel. It wasn't like I was like, oh, I'm lazy. I'm going to work two hours a day. I was working more, but I had, I think a lot of you, I, I don't know how many of you feel like you're artists, but, or the, you know, the eyes, high eyes. I need some variety in life right? I did really well in the retail because there was a business component. I was tracking our profit and loss, working on that. There was sales and I got to go sell the quilts and show how you could buy this home decor. Basically, um, I got to do displays and be very artistic window displays. I love the variety. I can work more hours if I don't have to sit in a law library for 10 hours and not talk to anyone. I gotta tell you, I was I was nervous about my Zoom background because I've always seen your 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 office, <laughs> the flowers. Yeah. The, my office is pretty, office, it's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, it's and, and it's it's usually pretty messy, but I've got all the mess on that side of the camera. I shoved it all over there so y'all can see it. <laughs> That's how you got to Fredericksburg, huh? Yeah. So then we got to Fredericksburg. Uh, everything that was in '96. Been here 25 years. Had my children here, um, and that's what. So along the way, so we had the retail stores. At one point, we got up to six of them. Um, and then we realized, why are we going to these other towns when nothing's as profitable as Fredericksburg? So we scale back down. So when I married Wes, we had two stores, one downtown and one on this side of town. Again, kind of funny because it's a town of 10,000 people. But you get different people. When you're downtown, you get the people that are walking downtown shopping. A lot of times out here on this part of town and are still our same beautiful building, the, what was it? Uh, we hung the quilts outside and that drew in people that didn't even know there was a Fredericksburg. Driving down the street, they would see that and pull over. So got a, you know, and the funny thing is I go back and I talk to agents all the time. I'm like, sales are sales are sales. What I learned and used in those 20 years, we have almost 24 years of retail are the same things I used to be a good real estate salesman. It's the same thing. You know, I, I, I never forget. I had, for example, I would get a lady would come in and we had two quilts out on the bed because you always want to get them looking, right? Same with the house, get them out there, get them, get an appointment, get them in the, get them excited about buying a house. Same thing. I was like, let's get those uh, quilts on the bed. Okay, we've got it narrowed down to two. And so I was like, you know, she's like, oh, I just can't decide. So I'm trying to help her decide. So I'm like, oh, but look at this one. It has a beautiful sawtooth border, uh, which I knew took a lot more work to sew it that way. I said, well, this one's kind of plain. And you could see her face change the minute I said that. She goes, yeah, it is plain. And that was kind of the one I liked. Uh -uh. And my mom's words are ringing in my ear. She said, you will know the minute you open your mouth and kill a cell the same in real estate. I learned from that experience to give them distinctions, but they were all positive. I learned to say, this is a beautiful, intricate sawtooth border. And this one has clean and simple lines. And the very next customer I used that with, she was clean and simple. That's why I like that one. If I'd called it plain, chances are I had taken away the validation of what they already liked. So I've taken that over to houses. It's the same thing, right? It's finding, you know what, this one's not as fixed up, but there's your upside opportunity, you know, or this one's move in ready. So they're distinctions, but they're all good because in truth, they are all good, right? Who am I to say this, a plain line is, is not as good as another, or that someone shouldn't want to fix her up or, or should. I see agents lose money every day by opening their mouth and giving too many opinions about the property. And then they inadvertently talk bad about the one the person wanted to buy. So true. Yeah. So then we kept going along. So once we were here, I always wanted to own real estate. Our prices here are super expensive. So I was like, I don't know how we'll ever be able to buy one and long-term rent it. People can't cover the mortgage. 
So then I knew this is a big B&B community. So think Airbnb. Mm -hmm. This was again 25 something years ago. So this was big here before there was an Airbnb. People had a cottage in back and they were renting it out uh, in this cute little tourist town, which is amazing. So I thought maybe that will work. So we fixed up an old house and we had a cottage on the side that we fixed up. I said, we spent way too much money on that for that to be just for grandma to visit occasionally. All right, that's gonna, that's, we're gonna have to get some money out of that thing. So we started renting it and turned out we loved renting it. The guests didn't bother us. We didn't bother them. It was all good. So that's what got us into owning b and properties. And we've owned different amounts over the years. So at that time we used a reservation service to do it for us. And finally I thought, you know, we really take our own reservations. They're well worth the 20% they charge us, but I've got locations on Main Street. I have employees. I have telephones and computers. So for me, it was silly not to just roll that into our business, right? So in 2007, we took all of our personal properties, made a beautiful real-time website, better photography than anyone else was using, and started renting them like crazy. So then you can imagine what happens next. People start going, hey, put me on your site. Your site is better. You know, we're always in real estate or in anything in business looking for a gap. So in B&Bs, the gap I saw was in Fredericksburg in 2007, you had to turn in a reservation request. So it's 10 o'clock at night and you're planning your trip. Are you, how patient are you with a reservation request that the following day they're going to get back to you? I was like, real-time software exists. Real-time software should be used. So they can put in their credit card, print it off midnight and uh, start driving this direction right? That, that's the world we lived in 2007. Come on, we'd already, that's the year the iPhone was invented. So they were so far behind and they would take photos themselves on an iPhone. So I knew there was a quality gap that we could fill. So we started picking up property after property and adding them to our website because I'd already hired my best friend who, you know, here we got a lawyer and she had a master's in social work to come run our BNB service. <laughs> but I was like, but she's smart, hardworking and organized. So that's all that really matters. So she starts running it and she goes, Maybe we should start taking some, Tammy, because all, all you're paying me to do is answer the phone all day and go, I'm sorry, we're full. I'm sorry, we're full. So yeah, let's go ahead and bring some other folks on. We did, and long story short, today we have 160 uh, properties as of today that we take reservations for and take 20% commission. That business is completely independent. I could be put in traction. I could leave for three years, and come back, and it chugs on without me. And honestly, that business is what allowed us more quickly to scale real estate. Because I said, I mean, I get it. Not everyone can do what we did, but you know, you got different benefits wherever you are in your life. Maybe you're 25 and you don't have something else that's putting food on the table, but you've got other upsides. So you so went to you that that in 100 in how many years? You got I'm sorry, honey? What year did you start selling real estate? 2015 at the very end. So zero to a million in, in, in five years. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, 100 million. You're going to talk about that, I assume, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, and how we did it, yeah. And, <laughs> and how we grew the team and all of those things. And, and it's been a really fun ride. But having that business, I always tell people, you know, give credit where it's due. Our mortgage was going to get paid. We had gasoline money. You know, so we had some things covered because of the B&B business. So we could go a little faster, a lot faster, really, in real estate. But we also had, were willing to have the nerve to do it. Um, we decided day one that we were going to throw everything into marketing. Wes and I both had kind of a marketing style background. In other words, running retail was all about displays and catching people's eye. Wes had worked um, in digital software and uh, literally worked for the Park City Chamber of Commerce. He had done a lot of this in his background as well. So we hit the ground running, taking out newspaper ads with our bios. We were in newspaper, you have to understand in our town, our town is small. So we have once a week newspaper. So people actually read it, you know, it's got some actual value there. Um, we started sending out postcards to people all over. And the number one thing, which I'm really here to talk about how we grew it so fast was 100 million percent because of social media. Because I found you can take a little thing, a little beginning, a little seed and make it look way bigger and way more important and impressive on social media. So we get a listing, right? Someone calls and goes, well, we want to list with you. You're our friend, we know you. And so, man, I would post about that listing with the sign and I would post with Wes putting the, you know, hammering it in. I was like, oh, hard, with it dark, you know, hardest working man you'll ever know right here. Look at him putting this up at eight o'clock at night. Um, and then we'd be going to getting ready for a closing and he's literally mopping the floors because he doesn't think it's clean enough for closing. I would take a picture from behind, not that flattering. So clearly they know he wasn't posing. <laughs> and I'm like, again, hardest working team you'll ever meet right here. This guy just doesn't stop for his clients. You know, so we're, and then we might do something in the backyard. So it might look like a lot more than it is. 
I will never forget the moment of having a friend at church come up to us who was in real estate. We had not had our first closing yet. We did have some listings. We had a few things in escrow. Hadn't had a closing yet. He comes up and go, and y'all are killing it. And I was like, yeah, we are killing it. We hadn't put a darn penny in the bank yet, but you bet we are. And it's because perception becomes reality, right? And everything I was showing was true, but people are so fearful to put things out there. And they're so hesitant. Man, just slam them with stuff. Heck, slam them, slam them, slam them with good, fun content. So what I always tell people is the number one thing they absolutely need to know is I always start here. I wonder if I still have it. Let me look at my drawer. I might even have this thing stored. Yeah, we won't. Do, I've done videos about it. Here is, it's probably gonna look backwards, but can you read that? 5,000, 5, hashtag 5,000. Every stinking one of you guys needs to make it your number one goal as you have time to build that friend base. You need 5,000 friends. That's all you're allowed to have. And I always stay at 5,000 friends. And depends on kind of what your business is, right? So if your business is focused toward, let's say that, that you aren't interested in bringing on agent attraction, let's say that you don't do a ton of referrals, then you want as much as possible of your 5,000 to be people who live and work where you want to buy and sell houses, right? You're looking for buyers and sellers to get to know you on a personal level. For me, I have a balance uh, because I do a lot of agent attraction, uh, which for me is great. I don't do as many referrals because as great as Fredericksburg is, there aren't that many referrals coming into a town of 10,000, right? If I'm in Atlanta, I'm gonna be going hard with realtors from big cities because I want that referral business. Um, so there's big balance there and you decide for yourself, but 5,000 friends. The example I like to use is if I were to come up to you and say, you know what? I am going to do you a great favor. I'm gonna print you a, a, a beautiful magazine. This is my Texas Bar Journal. The only thing I ever do with it now, it's my uh, my law journal. I still get it monthly. This is sad. I'll tell y'all a secret. The only thing I do is go straight to the back and make sure I don't know anybody in the obits and I throw it away. Because <laughs> I was like, I would never know if someone that I was very close to died. You know? <laughs> but that's all I do. I just did it five minutes ago. That's why I knew this was in the trash. <laughs> but if I said, I will give you, I'm, it's going to be all about you, Joe. It's going to be about your business. It's going to be glossy. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to do a piece about your family, humanize you. Then we're going to put your listings in here, your marketing strategy, your plan. We're going to put all this in a beautiful magazine and I'm going to do it for absolutely free. No strings attached. And I'll give you as many copies as you want up to 5,000. How many would you like? Do you want 973? You want 5,000? Yeah. This is not nearly as valuable as your social media and everybody, I see so many people out there with 900 friends. I'm like, you want 900 copies. Th this gives you a platform to entertain and communicate with and support and be helpful to 5,000 people. That's huge. And I, I see very few people that have 5,000 and I manage my 5,000 very carefully. I look every day to see if I'm at 49.99. Cause that means I've got a seat, a seat open of people I can talk to. There's two reasons, two or three reasons. Number one, I want the maximum number at all times because I want to actually communicate and get to know them. Number two, I want the maximum number because guess what? If you have 5,000 friends and if if you have 5,000 friends and if someone uh, sends you a request, guess what it does? Guess what it says? It'll say unable to accept. They have 5,000 friends. They're unable to accept. That does two things. Makes me sound kind of cool. Number one, how wrong they may be. <laughs> But it's a little bit of a you know scarcity factor. It's like, oh, they got 5,000 friends. More importantly to me, it makes them go, oh, she's not blowing me off. Because I always worry that they send a request and if I'm at 49.98, it's just going to sit there. And they don't know. But if it's at 5,000, they know I'm not ignoring them, that I can't do anything about it. So that's important to have exactly 5,000. Do it over time. Get involved in groups. If you add people and they start to see people that you know, that they know, make those meaningful relationships. Now, what's really beautiful is one time, five o'clock in the morning, I was being really good at the time and working out early. And I was at the gas station, you know, grabbing a bottle of water on my way to work out. And this guy goes, hey, Tammy. And I started to walk over to me. He goes, oh, I I'm sorry. I, I, we just know each other. I just know you on Facebook. I, I'm sure you get this all the time. And I, and I walked over back in pre-COVID days when you could shake hands. And I walked over and shook his hand and said, no, the whole point is to be friends in real life. Thank you for having the nerve to come up and say hi. It's not to be behind our screen, but if, but if we can all get to know one another in real life, that's great and good for you, you know? Um, so it is about building real relationships where you can and where appropriate. 
one reason, here's the biggest, you probably know what the biggest objection I get to having 5,000 friends is. Well, I don't want to send friend requests because what if they think I'm a weirdo? If they don't know me, they're going to think I'm weird. Well, one person out of 100 will think you're weird and who cares? Every blue moon when I was still adding, I would send and somebody might go, do I know you? And I'd write back and say, you know what? Hey, no worries. I just reach out to everyone that lives here in our area. No big deal though. Have a great day. Boom, done. Who cares? Move on. And if they want to make a big deal out of that, I couldn't care less. They're never going to be my people, right? If they don't like, because I'm a very public person. I don't have a shy private bone to hide things in my body. So we're not going to be people anyway. And I always make it clear. It's like, oh, no, I just reach out to anyone who lives here in our area. Maybe we can help one another out in business or whatever, but have a great day. It's all good. And move on. Stop letting that fear of not seeming cool stop you from getting to 5,000 people. It's hugely important. Here's the other thing. I bet every one of you is going to be wondering this. What about, well, do I do all this on my business page? Because that's what everybody wonders, right? How many of you have a business page? Some do. Okay. Some of you have a business page. Quite a few of you. Um, I have a business page and I think it's great. You can put listings over there. You can boost them. You can do whatever. I'm not opposed to having a business page. All of my business, all of my business comes from my personal page. All of it. My per that's why I keep the 5,000 friends, right? I don't get people. Because how much do you guys enjoy those sponsored business pages? Do you really like looking at your plumber's business page? No. But if you need a plumber, if that plumber has been fun, uplifting, a nice kind of guy, you're not going to like that guy. When you do have a plumbing problem, who's he going to call? I don't talk about real estate 24-7. I talk about it enough. But I mix it all in because if they're not looking at real estate right now, they don't care. Just like I don't care about my plumber when I'm not needing a plumber. But if he's done some fun posts showing life of a plumber, midnight down the septic, you know, those would be fun, right? It, you don't just say a lot. It doesn't have to be grand. But then the next post should be about his dog or his cat or whatever else he does, you know, his family. You know, everybody's got their sensitivities and private, you know, issues. So do whatever you feel comfortable with. But mix in your business and your personal. You've got to be interesting. I took a million dollar listing uh, four, three, four months ago. And she called me. She goes, I had listed with someone else because I knew him from church. And I knew I should have gone with you, Tammy. I've never met her in my life. She, her parents had a house. Million dollar listing. She goes, you know, my favorite thing you ever did on social media. I follow all your stuff. And I really love that video you did about how to curl your hair. Uh-huh. I'm not even joking. So million dollar listing because I did an inch because their next words are always the same thing. I feel like I already know you. I already know. So I go in there and I've already got the listing because I've already shown her. She already knows Wes. So I go, well, Wes, I know you from Facebook. They already know about Princess Coco and Frankie, the cats. They know these things and they come, they go, I feel like I already know you. And because she liked my hair video, she gives me a million dollar listing that we just closed. There's another great example of how it works. And my daughter helped me with this one. So we took a, we had a $3.99 million b, b listing down here, which even for Fredericksburg, that's a lot of money. We got it under contract in eight days. So we all have the same fear. And I know what you're thinking, right? Do you post it or do you not? Because our fear is what if it falls through? Or, yeah. Don't we all worry about what if it falls through? Super and I told my daughter, I said, what, what if we say under contract in eight days and it falls through? She goes, it won't be your fault. It'll be because some stupid average. I mean, you did your job. I'm right. You marketed it. You got a contract in eight days. Who cares? They'll never even pay attention. Guess what? We marketed it and it fell through. So we went back and we just made a little comment under that saying, hey, back on the market, something totally, un, you know, not related to the property, blah, blah, blah. We're all under the sad impression that everyone that can see our social media sees every post. They do not. I can assure you that the 99% of the people who saw the original post never saw the follow-up and they didn't care, right? It wasn't a big deal. And so I went back, posted back on the market as a separate post. There's no deception. You tell them the truth, but the person that saw you did that doesn't care. They don't go back and look. Here's how I know. So a year later, six months to a year later, a guy calls me who owns a big B&B in Comfort. And he tells me, hey, I saw that you uh, got Angel Lodge under contract eight days and sold that. And I said, yeah, I don't know this man. He's never commented. He's never liked. He's never done anything. I never heard his name. And he goes, yeah, I got a big B&B uh, over here in Comfort. And he goes, I see that you sold that one. I said, well, you know what? Actually, it, uh, that one fell out because 
you know, someone had sprained her ankle or whatever. And there was the insurance was taking care of it, but it made those buyers nervous. He's like, oh, I deal with that all the time. I was like, yeah, that's all that was. But then guess what? We did get another buyer and it sold, it closed. So he didn't care, right? We listed his property. And the one thing he mentioned was that post that caught his eye. We listed his five and a half million dollar, 5.81. We sold it for five and a half million dollar B&B because he saw the under contract in eight days. He also called his friend who had a B&B in Comfort who listed with us his $3 million property. We sold all of them. And then we got more. So it continues to grow, right? So sometimes it's having the nerve to post. So this morning, I follow my own advice again. We have a $3.2 million, $3 million listing. It's a B&B compound. Um, and it's under contract. It might fall apart, but I've learned the lesson. Other sellers notice when you say under contract. In Texas, we can't ever say, it's kind of weird for you guys if you're in California. You guys can tell what things sold for. We can't. We can never publicly say what we sold for. We can never say 110% of mark. We can't do any of that. But we can say what it listed for because that's in Zillow, right? So what I write is under contract, 12 unit BNB compound, put the photos, list price, 3.195 million. That's catching the eyes of some potential sellers out there who are not going to like that post. They're not going to comment and I may not hear from them for three months. But they once again are having it reaffirmed that we can sell big BNB properties better than anyone. The call will come from that. So some of it is having a little nerve. But the main thing I find that realtors do is they just post their listings. And it's, I get it, you need to do that, but it can get really monotonous and really boring really quick, right? Super important that you mix it up with fun things. They'll look at your listing if you'll also show you cooking. I said, you know, there's so many great ideas out there. If let's just say that you could say, I've never had a green thumb, but I'm determined to grow something. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to post, I'm going to try to grow a tomato plant. Sounds stupid. This is really off the top of my head. So maybe you go outside and you put a tomato plant in the ground. You say every Monday, we're going to get an update. People will start going, oh, you need to water it more. You need, did you get miracle grow? They'll start getting interested in your stupid tomato plant. And every Monday they'll check in, is the tomato plant making it this week? Did it make it? Dumb stuff. I don't care what it is. I, I've told people, you could say I'm the worst cook ever. Um, I always had this idea and I've never done it. You could say I'm a terrible cook. I need you guys to help me. I want to come up with five recipes that can have five ingredients or less, cost five bucks or less, and that I can't screw up. Do you know how many people are going to come to your rescue and start going, oh, just get this thing of cream cheese, pour this over, add it with crackers. It looks beautiful. And you, they're going to start sharing. And you say, I'm going to pull the best ones. And next week, I'm going to do it Monday through Friday, one a day. And we're going to see if even I can't screw them up. I'm looking for infallible. People would think that's fun. Or if you're a great cook, then you twist it and you say, I'm going to come up with five things you can cook for $5, five ingredients or less, five minutes. Quick, easy, boom, boom, boom things that you need to know, right? People would love that. Has nothing to do with real estate. We'll get you business guaranteed 100% because they will start to like you as a person. And if they don't, they're still not going to like you as a person in real life, right? They're not your people. There's, some, there's definitely people that I'd be too much for. They're not going to like me in real life, right? I'm really trying to, that's great. It's kind of like we always talk about, right? You're trying to call to get to a no. If they're a no, great, because you want to keep, the more no's you can get through, you're getting to the yes. So if people don't like me and they unfriend me, I'm always like, boom, I got two spots available. And I go look in there and see, and I, and I go read the friend requests I have always sitting in there and I read them and I decide, do they fit my avatar? Is this the person I need to accept? And I treat it kind of like gold, right? So this is where literally all of our business has come from. Everything we have, everything we do is from this. And guess how much it costs? Nothing. It doesn't cost anything. Now, I, I want to also have it be interactive. If any of you guys have questions or concerns, because I know when I suggest some of these things, sometimes people go, uh, this is what's holding me back or making me think twice. So feel free. If any of you have something you want answered specifically, just throw it out there. There we go. I'm joking. I've been too much for people, right? Exactly right. It's exactly right. And, you know, here's one of the things, because I'll hear new agents or young agents be like, oh, I know I'm at a disadvantage. I said, so use it. I mean, use that and say, I, you know, I could see somebody saying, I'm a young female realtor. And that, you know what that means? That means I have to work harder. That means I'm more prepared. I would show that level. Right. And I would lean into what could be seen as a weakness and I would turn it into a strength. 
And that's what I would talk about all the time because there are going to be some people out there who will want to support you because they go, man, look at her trying. She's really trying hard. She's a go-getter. I'd rather give my business to her than to some old dude that I've used for years. You will get some deals if you'll be vulnerable and say, I'm going to have to work twice as hard and I'm fine with that. And just show the big paperwork, the research, put the data out there, the market reports show that you're smart, you're hardworking, give them data that the old fat cats aren't doing because they don't have to. Whatever you perceive as your Achilles heel, lean into it because there are people that will love being vulnerable. You want to spend 80% of your time, I'd say, being aspirational, right? Showing success, happy life. You're not bragging, you're showing happy things because people want to affiliate with happy, successful people. Whether they know it or not, they do. But then you got to spend 20% of your time being vulnerable right? You got to also be willing to say, man, it was a tough week at work. I don't let things get me down, but this one got me down. And you talk about that. I did a video once on one of my drive videos talking about how tired I was. People loved it. I literally had someone comment under there that I know in real life. I mean, our kids dance together. And she goes, oh, I needed to hear this today. I went on with no makeup, hair in a chip clip early in the morning. And I said, I'm just so tired. And that was one of my most seen videos ever because she, she wrote on that. She goes, this morning I had to go to the grocery store after I dropped the kids off and I had to go with my wet hair. Didn't even dry it. She goes, I literally thought to myself, which I think is crazy. She goes, I literally thought to myself, Tammy Pack would never go to the grocery store with wet hair, which I totally <laughs> would. I so would. I'm going, Girl, we sat and danced for an hour. What are you talking about? But she goes, seeing this made my day. You're just like us. You're just normal folk. So if you can do show the successes and the wins that make them want to associate with happy, successful people, but keep it real and not ever try to be perfect because no one is, no one's life's perfect. And if you will let them get those glimpses of vulnerability, you will go through the roof with your social media. Hey, Tammy, I got to tell you, just listen to this. This feels like therapy, by the way. I needed this. Like, <laughs> I'll be myself, you know, like, uh, and uh, did I tell agents like newer agents or whatever, the vulnerability piece, I'm like, I'm like, I lost down on listings because I got the suit, the briefcase, the car, the whatever. And they're like, dude, this guy's too much. Like, I, I remember having my heart like, well, I'm the guy. Like, what do you mean you're fired? Someone else like, well, so-and-so just getting started and blah, blah, blah. We're going to help them out. And I was like, what? And it's so true, man. And also, I just realized like, um, you know, when I, when I met you, I met all these new people when I joined the company, right? Like in our group. And I remember so quickly, I like, I just knew you so well, but I just realized it was from social media. Like we had talked, of course, right? And then I think we had, we had talked more because I just felt closer to you, right? And this is everything that you're explaining. So in our, our working relationship together at the same company, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna call her, I'm gonna call Tammy. And I'm like, oh, I know about her cats and her this. <laughs> and it was from your social media. It's insane. Like I totally knew you and I felt comfortable coming to you early on with like whatever I needed. Uh, that's so funny. I don't know, I just wanted to share that. That's a huge aha for me. It's so true and it's, it's hard to get our head around and I, I don't post enough. There's no, people worry about what's too much. There is no too much. There's days when I posted 12 times a day, there's days I go two or three days and I get distracted and don't post at all. There are not many things I can do with my time that are more valuable than posting. So this morning I posted about having that under contract. Yesterday, we were in Palm Beach looking at wedding venues for my daughter. So I did a big post saying, in the long run, we love this hotel. It's exquisite. And we decided she's not getting married here. And here's why. The cost versus what her perceived value, this really isn't her dream wedding. And I said, how many of you out there are like me and are nosy or curious and go, I have no idea what a wedding at a five-star hotel would cost. That's interesting to a lot of people. I said, drop your comments below, give me your guesses, throw it out there, what you think. And when we land, I'm gonna give you the details. I have, as of as of eight o'clock this morning, and this was only a few hours, I had 52 comments That's with people going in and they loved it. Cause one was going 80,000, 500. I mean, they were putting all kinds of numbers in there. So then I went and updated it. And I said this much, this, and I broke down everything. I said, it's interesting reading. Cause you don't always know that a band in Florida, a live band is 20 grand. I was like, that's crazy just for the band. Okay, so you start listing it and they loved it. It was engaging. What does that have to do with real estate? Nothing, which I say, which means everything. Because if I was only talking about real estate, they'd go, oh, great, I'm not looking for a house this week. I don't need a house. That's great, Tammy, thanks a lot, move on. Keep them engaged with fun, silly, goofy, things that'll get them to talk to you. Cause now Facebook knows they've engaged with me. They commented. Facebook's going to show them 10 times more of my posts now. 
because they told Facebook they liked what I did. So if you can draw them out and get them talking to you, that's Facebook's algorithm. I love how Gary Vaynerchuk says people complain, complain and go, I don't like seeing politics and a bunch of negative crap. That's the word he not would use, but I will use. <laughs> I don't like seeing negative crap on my Facebook page. He goes, then quit clicking on negative crap. He goes, everyone that sees a bunch of stuff they don't like on there, it's because you like the drama and you're clicking on it. So Facebook is showing it to you more. You're training Facebook what to give you. I said, I see no negative crap because I don't ever click on it. So Facebook goes, this guy don't like that. It's very smart that way. If you like to read it, maybe you don't like it. You're like, oh, can you believe they said this and click another? Your feed will be full of that. So whatever you click on is what your feed will be full of. So if people comment on my post, guess who's going to be showing up in their feed a whole lot more for the next few days? Me. So I got to take advantage of that and keep running. Now, the next post might be about a listing, multiple offers without some folders, you know, something silly with that. But you got to keep it engaged, keeping it real. I took a picture, no makeup on with my mask. I'm headed to, got to go to Florida. got up at 3 a.m. This, this is as good as it gets at 3 a.m. Going to look at wedding venues. Now, everyone was commenting, where are you going? Is it the breakers? We're so curious now. Is that where she's going to get married? Keep people interested. Let them know. Be a little vulnerable. I mean, people worry. My husband's the worst. He's the best and the worst. I love him so much. And he's so private. <laughs> so he really struggles to try to do this. But he's like, oh, you told people we're going on a cruise. I was like, yes, because you think they're going to break into our house, right? And I'm like, whatever, you know, life's too short for that. And I'm like, but I see why he's paranoid because he did grow up on the mean streets of Salt Lake City. <laughs> you know, it's not like he's from the Bronx or something. <laughs> he's from Salt Lake, but he's paranoid as could be. So yes, I post all about our vacation because again, aspirational, right? You don't brag all the time. You got to be vulnerable, but you got to let them see, man, they're going on another great trip. They look really happy together. I want to kind of celebrate their happiness. So guess what happens? We're on that trip. I literally have someone Facebook message me that I don't know. They're one of my 5,000 friends. They live here in town. Say, Mr. goes, Timmy, I know you guys are on a trip and I drove by your house this morning and, and the garage door is open. So I just wanted you to know, the garage door is open. I was like, see Wes, this is what you really get. Most people are good. And let's believe that way. And I wrote back and said, you know what? I thank you so much, but my two daughters actually are home. So I'm sure one of those dingbats just left the door open when they are coming and going. But, you know, don't assume they're out to rob you. Maybe they're out to help you. And the fact that I was gone, she messaged me to say, I was just really worried. Do, do you need me to go there and do anything? <laughs> I don't even know this person. <laughs> so that's the truth. What, let's see, what other good, oh, here's, okay. Let me give you one more black and white good tip that I think that people struggle. They tell me they struggle with a lot. The number one thing is people will say, how do you post about giving to charity or helping something like that's kind of a good deed? Does it make you feel kind of cringy, you know, right? You're like, ooh, yeah. I'm not supposed to talk about it, right? So, yeah. so here's what, here's how we've made that work. We were taking, a couple of years ago, we did a great campaign. Uh, let's take food to the teachers in every school in our town during their in-service. Let's take a breakfast. Hilda's breakfast tacos, we took a flower arrangement, we made signs saying absolute charm loves our teachers in their colors. We took our co our logo and turned it into their school colors and some of their hashtags that are, you know, with their school's name. We took some balloons, some fun stuff. We set up a nice breakfast. We didn't stick around to get all the credit. They'd say, oh, you guys can stay. We're like, this is not about us. This is about you guys. You, you guys are working hard. So one of my folks in my office said, well, don't post about it though. Because I mean, you know, that's like talking and bragging about yourself for doing something good. So I was like, well, I'm gonna post about it because that's what I do. So, but you're right, I gotta be sensitive, right? I gotta think this through. So here's how we approached it. I went out there and I said, you know what? Our teachers are more stressed and pushed to the limit this coming year than ever. On average, they have three more students each in every class than they did before. They did not get pay raises because of budget cuts. And so, so many teachers have been let go that they're all gonna be hurting a little bit this year. So this is something we've done put us to shame. They need all of us. This is just a little thing. But what can you do? If you've got a kid in school, is there some little pick me up you could send over a little gift card, anything to your kids, teachers, businesses, join us. Uh, tell us what you want to do to help. We'll go facilitate. We will bring things into the teachers. Let's make this happen. So you become the person who is rallying the troops to go help versus the look what we did. And some people don't get it because our, our big competition here in town a week later, without saying anything, of course, goes into the schools and starts doing kind of, you know, which I'm like, great. Because the truth is, either the agents, other agents don't do it. And so you get credit, people going, I knew no one else would do it, but absolute charm. Or number two, you go, 
God, he just come there just because absolute charm told him to. So I mean, you know, we win either way, right? We get good, good publicity and good vibes no matter what. So these other agents went in there and did, and you know what they did? I started looking at the pictures closely. They went in on grandparents day at one of the schools and they served the grandparents. They didn't bring a darn thing. They didn't spend five cents. They poured tea, which anyone could do, and took a lot of pictures. They all wore their team shirts and went and all crowded in to the pictures to take. Whereas we let no more than one to two agents do any of it. And most of the pictures were about, is all about them. So see, you can still miss the mark. It's like, you think teachers are dumb enough? No, you didn't bring us anything. It's the same food we were going to have. You just poured our drink. I can pour my own tea. Thanks a lot. Versus you bought all this. I mean, we ended up spending $3,000 on food. I mean, it was a, it was a pretty significant thing. If I were a solo agent, I'd say pick one school. You know, I would pick one area that's near and dear to your heart. And I'd be in there every month, once a month, teacher appreciation day. You don't have to hang around. We did that at Heritage where my kids went and they go, you should leave your business cards. I was like, we don't need to. They know who it is. And I never forgot one of my favorite maxims ever. And you should memorize this one and blazon it somewhere, which was so great. I heard a speaker once say, because there's always the issue of closing gifts or gifts in general. Do you logo them, right? Is it a, do you put your logo on? Oh yes, we give out these beautiful cut code knife set with our logo on it. This guy was brilliant. He goes, if the gift is nice enough, you don't have to be reminded who gave it to you. Think about that for a minute. If the gift is nice enough, you don't forget who gave it to you, right? Don't pay extra, have your logo on the stuff for them to use in their home. Just give them a little bit nicer gift. They're not gonna forget you. They know what you did. And I thought that was stinking brilliant. There's nothing wrong with having logoed items. We have some caps and shirts we can mix in as well, right, for fun. But just, it's, it's the same kind of thing. Once we've gone out there, we hear all the time, oh, but Absolute Charm does so much in the community. And they know that. You do a few things and you do it and do it, you couch it in terms of, please help us. We're just one little old team. This is just nothing. This is piddly. Make us look terrible. Come and bring something far greater than what we as one little group were able to do. We just did a food drive. This one was really good on social media. I said, okay, we were going to do the thing that a lot of agents do where you go put the paper bag out to do a food drive. And you say, you know, we're going to pick it up in two days and all this. Well, we have to do everything big. So we started going, man, that's a lot of bags. How many hours are we going to do driving around and trying to see, do we get all the bags? So finally, I thought, you know, especially in COVID year, I think we can get away with this. I said, here's what we're going to do. We need you to send your donation to the Fredericksburg Food Pantry made out to them. Send it to us. Venmo it. We can create a special account or mail it in. We need your name. Venmo it or mail it in. And we are, why not just send it straight there? Because we're going to match it up to $2,500. You have this long to do it. And I thought, I'm going to spend way more than $2,500 on the bags, not counting the effort. We raised, what was it? Almost, was it, it was up 7,000? No, it was almost $8,000. And all we contributed to that part was 2,500. We had donations of $500, of 200, of $10. You said every donation, we, we were like, you know, make your $10 count. We'll match your 10 up to all this up to 2,500. And so we took a check of almost $8,000 to the food pantry. It was so simple. But we said, give us your name because we're also going to draw one winner and give them a new iPad. So we had that little fun, that live event when we went and presented the check, right? So no one can fault that. And who knows? But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, within maybe a year or somebody, it's going to be someone that saw that and like that we gave. It wasn't just, hey, everyone give to the food pantry. We're going to match. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I've got a question here. Someone's asked here, Timmy, what you learned from 2020 is a positive. You're carrying forward. Joe should have worn a track suit to one. Let's see I agree. Um, you know, so many positives. Um, so many positives. Being more human and more out there and being sensitive and knowing when to pull back. You know, you, you still have to realize where we are. We have not been affected badly with COVID at all in terms of our economy is flourishing and it's doing extremely well. That's not the case everywhere, right? Some people due to regulation are shut down. So we have to just be sensitive to how we state and do everything that we do. Um, but it's it, for us, it's been a tremendous year. It's been a very freeing year. The virtual, using the virtual environment even more during the time we did stay home during April really had a lot of things take off. So you can take something good. There can be a silver lining, I believe, out of literally anything. And, and hopefully you guys have all found a silver lining in 2020 as well. Thanks, Tammy. Um, yeah. We're at, yeah, we've got about 10 minutes left here. That was really awesome. Um, 
That was really awesome. I want to say thanks for joining us. Usually what we do is we kind of stop here. We like to start on time and end on time. And I'm going to share a couple of ahas, if that's okay. And then uh, I'm going to ask some, uh, I'm going to ask Sam Marks and some other people from my team to share some ahas and anyone else or any questions. So uh, let's share a couple of ahas and then any questions. A uh, huge aha for me was uh, the 5,000 people thing, right? So like what's crazy is we spend so much time on our social media pieces and how they look and proofreading them and whose photos in it. And, but we don't spend any time thinking about who we're putting it in front of, which is bonkers to me. Right. And, uh, and I think, and then the other aha was just like, dude, I think about like my just listed just sold posts and nobody likes them. Nobody cares. Right. And then I show a picture of like, I don't know, my son and I on a blanket in the park, you know, or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, um that's that's cool can i ask you this i'm gonna be vulnerable so like i have a limiting belief where i'm like if i'm like renovating a house or buying another house or if i'm being if i'm doing like highly successful things or opening up an office or whatever sometimes i feel like i need to pull back like dude i have too much going on i don't want the haters coming at me or something like that uh or if i'm like going on vacation or i'm doing this like that just came up to me as like i'm like dude i'm like i do some cool stuff you know and i'm kind of afraid to post it like very going- common I get this all the time. And sure. again, my daughter's one of my inspirations when it comes to tactical things. She's like, no, people want to work with somebody that's successful. I don't care what anyone says. They, and they may even kind of guff at it, but they want to know that, especially in things like real estate, you only have money to do those things because you're good at what you do. Yeah. So they're going to take their greatest asset and turn it over to someone that they know sells a lot of property. So as long as you're still being down to earth, you know, and sweet and kind and good and showing giving back to the community and every once in a while show when you screwed something up, they will allow a lot of the other, and I think they will appreciate it. They want to know you got something going on. Right, for sure. Yeah, I try to keep most of that stuff hidden. Um, awesome. So um, anyone else? You know what? You know what? You would get a lot of things on your just listed. <laughs> if you took a picture, you obviously posted your son anyway. So you're not one of those that worries about posting your kid. Get right. your kid out there with a sledgehammer, putting the sign in the yard. You know, right. following dad's footsteps, you know, got to teach him, got to bring him up right, working hard, new listing, check it out. And how did point and say, mix the two right just make it fun i mean put coco in a backpack and take her to an open house and everyone said i'm going to whichever open house princess coco is at the cat <laughs> that's the best you know yeah that's funny you know what i did i took my son door i went door knocking once and like uh people <laughs> you know it was like it was fine it was door knocking it's not awesome but it's like okay right, great you're the realtor cool i swear to god the next saturday my wife my wife's an rn she's a nurse and so she had a she had to work the whole weekend like and i and i was like all right well i had it on my my calendar a time block and i brought my son in the little push thing oh my god the whole neighborhood knew who we were in two hours like it was insane and it was like and uh you know i'm a new i don't know what you know like that stuff was like oh my god this is and that was a limiting belief for me where i was like no, but I'm professional. No one can know I have a family. That's crazy, right? Like I'm a, I'm the real estate guy, not the dad or the whatever. And that was a huge paradigm shift for me. Was so you, like, Joe, you should have gone way farther with that. So you influenced that many people that saw you physically, right? Correct. So then did you go live? No, of course not. I did not. Danny. Because then there's 5,000 more people that could see that because the people in life liked it, didn't they? So would the no. people out there, they'd be like, whoa, look at him. He's down to earth. I'm a dad too, man. I'd be embarrassed. You go, I'm so embarrassed. Look what I'm doing. I'm such a nerd. I can't believe it's embarrassing me. Totally. That's what people want, man. They want the real because I think this day and age, everyone, we're all being, we're all trying to be sold stuff. You were talking about the sponsored ad, right? You're like, it's like everywhere you turn, somebody's trying to sell me something, whether I go on YouTube or dude, I go to the, mo- remember you, now they're in the movies, right? You go watch a movie, there's ads in the beginning, you know? And so now it's like, holy crap. And I always say it. So we do mail marketing and it's always like, I, I learned that early on was like, nobody wants the like postcard with like the pecan pie recipe or the local football team schedule. Like, so we do custom mailers that are like us and fun stuff and like, we just don't take it social media at all, but uh, I'm going to shut up. Um, and someone who else would like to share an aha? Yeah, I got one, Joe. I, um, thank you, Tammy. This is great. Um, I have an aha and a question. I think what you said about um, taking the picture of uh, you guys putting the sign in the ground and doing the work and just looking busy. We, I, I'm like regretting. I just put three signs in the ground in like a foot of snow in the, in the past snow. like three days. And I had to like, I was like, I dug out the snow with my foot and had to like hammer a spike through the ground and everything. I was praying to God I wasn't like hitting gas lines or sidewalks and all that stuff. So it would have been like really great to put that up. And I, I have some pictures, so I will now. But um, so that's my aha. My question is, um, 
you're like all in on it. Obviously you do it like it's part of your life and your day. Um, I try and like stay off my, I try and stay off my phone. Like right when I wake up in the morning, it's basically impossible. But so is there like a first thing that you do in the morning that you like a first social media or something that you've incorporated into your morning? No, I am, I am very a uh, harem scare willy nilly and I don't recommend it. Um, what I do recommend is something that came up at our realtor boot camp we did in Austin last week. Someone talked about and starting Monday morning, I'm planning to start doing this. She has what she calls her social media hour of power. And it's first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. She gets up early enough to have to block out an hour and got a timer. And after that, that's it. And she's going to be commenting on, uh, you, you post your on your own on all your formats, but you also want to be commenting and engaging with people who you would like to be your buyer or your seller someday. You know, I said, spend part of your time yeah, if you're in line at the grocery store or you're, you know, in line anywhere, go on there and start finding, don't just like them. People don't have time to go look and see who liked it, but they will read every stinking comment. I don't care if you don't know them. If they think you're weird because you, because you post what a lovely family you have, congratulations to you, then they're a weirdo, right? Everyone likes seeing that. Everyone likes someone who's kind who goes on theirs and makes them feel good because everyone who posts is scared that no one will comment or like it. So if you're the hero that does that, you're, you're in their good side now. Well, Tim, you know, say, you know, say awesome. right? on Dave's team. So say he taught us to engaging, like, con- like talking to people through Facebook or messenger or comments, those are mm-hmm. contacts. Right. And so from us, from like, we pound the phones or like, if you don't talk to somebody over the phone, it's not a contact. And he was kind of opening up our mind to that as well. It's a great point. It's a great point. Spend some of your time, dedicated time each day. And sometimes that can be a weakness. Some days I post so much that I hardly have time to keep up with what other people are posting. So you do need a balance. And I would suggest if you have to start with 30 minutes, start with a half hour power of social media Mm -hmm. while you're having your coffee, set a timer if it becomes a a black hole that sucks you in, right? Um, And say, I'm being very intentional and I'm going to not be all business. I'm going to have fun with it, but I'm going to do it for this amount of time and that's it. I love that. I'm going to start that tomorrow. That's awesome. You know, Stephanie Morrison, you want to chime in? Uh, you, you do really well. Stephanie, uh, Tammy, Stephanie, um, she's in our in our she's in our group in EXP. She's crushing it. She does a lot, ton on social media. Wonderful. Any, uh, Stephanie, or any questions? Um, well, what's that? As long as there's a bison. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> that's been. I was thinking about that because that has been like the one of the most successful like social media things that I've done. Right now I'm in Denver and Denver is a super hot market and everyone loves like urban chic, you know, and every single uh, stage property or showing has the same picture of this black and white bison cow. And so I just started posting like the boomerangs and reposting it and reposting it. I've gotten people from DC that are going on showings and sending it to me. I'm like, everyone's like, I posted a horse like, oh my God, the cow has a friend. And I just keep writing like, if you see, if you put this in your listing, there's going to be a bidding war or, you know, warning, if you see this, you know, place an offer now. And so all these other agents are writing me and it's just, it's become a really hilarious thing. And I, I felt like I was being really annoying with it, but I just couldn't stop. I'm like, this is hilarious. I'm seeing it everywhere. But anyways, um, great. It is that. stuff like that that has been so super engaging. And so I was really relating to a lot of what you were saying. And um, I think the, the whole thing's been an aha. And uh, I just, um, I really loved in the beginning you talking about sales because, you know, I came from a background of being a hairstylist and selling products. And it, it is all the same thing. It's just now it's a house, you know, and um so that was really great. And then the, the rug and, you know, not calling it plain saying clean lines yep, versus yep. plain. I mean, just that one tweak of the word, because I like a ton of colors. You can see my kitchen cabinets are teal that some people don't want teal cabinets. You know, it's not up to me to buy their house for them. It's up to me to point out. Yes. If I see, you know, a meth lab next door, point right. that out. But at the same yeah, time, true. don't you know, interject my opinion on, on their, on their property. So anyways, I love the whole thing. I love you. I, um, I look up to you. So this was really great. Oh, Thanks so for doing sweet. This. Thank you. Yeah. Joe, I've got a scoot. I've got one minute to my coaching call, but you guys feel free to stay on. Y'all are awesome. Thank you for having me. This has been a hoot this morning. I've enjoyed every second of it. Tammy, you're a hoot. We love you. Have fun. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Bye.
Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Cool guys, thanks everyone for joining. We had a really great group today. Um, I posted some notes in um, the chat, which will like disappear in like three seconds. Um, if you guys, um, if you guys want those notes, or if you guys need anything at all, feel free to um, to email admin at joeosgroup.com. Uh, next week, Quinn, do you know what our training is next week? Sam and Stephanie, I think, right? Yes. Cool, Sam. What are you training on next week? Uh, we're going to be talking about working with buyers. Stephanie and I are going to talk about getting your offers accepted and uh, standing out in uh, multiple offer situations. It's going to be awesome. It's awesome. Stephanie, you know anything about that? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm getting killed over here in Denver, but at the same time, we, you know, I'm getting offers accepted. Me and Sam had a great uh, talk this week. We talked for about an hour and just that hour of talking was not only like comforting because it is so difficult right now to work with buyers, but at the same time, it, it gave me some really great ideas and I'm excited. I'm likely going to be writing some offers today and tomorrow and utilizing some of what me and Sam talked about. So I'm excited for it to, to, awesome. to talk about it and to learn. Awesome. So yeah, it's going to be good. We'll, we'll be, we'll be doing some venting. So it's like some free therapy if you've had offers not accepted and uh joe i think is what you're getting to we are gonna we're, we have a theme next week so uh our thursday theme if you're coming back please do uh i know derek riley knows about this one we're gonna start with an old favorite aloha it's gonna be the aloha theme use that however you want <laughs> come prepared go shopping do whatever you gotta do don't buy anything expensive bring but, your boogie board uh, is what Sam's yes. saying. Um, rain, exactly. bring, bring your virtual backgrounds. So yeah, I could have a shirt on. I could not have a shirt on next week. Whatever. We're gonna. Have <laughs> we might get crazy. I don't. I don't really know. Um, Tune in to find out. <laughs> cool guys. And uh, if you guys, if there's something you guys believe it or not, I think that was awesome. Tammy's rad. Um, we run out of ideas to train on, and this is for you guys. <laughs> you know, and it's for your you. It's for your teams. It's for whatever. So. This is agent facing, right? So we're here to help the realtors figure out how to grow their business. So if there's something that you're struggling with, like I know, I know Jill, Kathy, like I know a lot of you guys are newer, you're getting your license. Like if there's something that you're like, oh, I need to talk to Joe about that or blah, blah, blah. Guess what? Ask me about it. We'll carve out an entire hour and we'll train on it, right? And then like, I look around these rooms, you've got a lot of mega agents, you've got people that do a ton of business, You've got newer agents. So just remember something that you might need to hear, someone else might need to hear it as well. And so um, don't be shy. This is for you guys. This isn't for Joe to talk for an hour or Tammy to talk for an hour. This is like, let's share our ideas. Where are we having trouble? What's working? What's not working? And what can we do better? And let's figure this out together, right? So that's how we're going to have fun and we're going to succeed. Um, I went two minutes over. This will be on YouTube. Oh, our YouTube channel, all of our trainings are on our YouTube channel. Subscribe. You'll know when we post new ones. And um, that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Awesome.